in this video, I want to talk about three really, really important formulas that are used in calculus. So the first one is a formula for the derivative of a to the x. So if you take the derivative of a to the x, this is simply a to the x, natural log of a. That's the formula. Okay, so it's a to the x, natural log of a. Let's do a simple example right away so you see how it works. Say we had to take the derivative of 3 to the x with respect to x. So in this case, all you do is you write 3 to the x, and then you put the natural log of 3 here. That's it. So this is the first formula. Notice uh, e to the x, which is one you're probably familiar with if you're watching this video, we know that if we take the derivative of e to the x, we simply get e to the x. So here, using this formula, it would be e to the x, natural log of e. Ah, but the natural log of e is 1. So this is just e to the x times 1, so it's e to the x. So e to the x is that all-important function who is its own derivative, right? Uh, it's the only non-zero function in the entire world where if you take the derivative of e to the x, you get e to the x. So the rate of change is equal to the height of the graph. It's pretty deep. So that's the first formula, pretty simple. The second formula is if you're integrating a to the x. So if you integrate a to the x with respect to x. So notice when you differentiate, you're dividing. So when you uh, when you're multiplying. So when you integrate, then you'll divide. So this will be a to the x over ln a plus c. So when you differentiate, you multiply. When you integrate, you divide. Pretty easy to memorize. Here's an example. Say we have 4 to the x dx. So in this case, it'll just be 4 to the x. And then you just divide by the natural log of 4, and you put a plus c. So really, really useful formulas, right? So when you're differentiating, you multiply by the natural log. Uh, when you're integrating, you divide by the natural log. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care. In this short video, we're going to go through a brief proof of this property from calculus. We're going to prove that the derivative of a to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a. It's really useful to know how to do this because chances are you might forget this. So if you ever forget what the formula is, you probably won't forget the proof if you know the proof. That's oftentimes the case in math. If you know the proof, then you can memorize the formula for the rest of your life. So let's go through the proof very briefly. So proof. So in order to prove this, we're going to rewrite a to the x. Recall that if you have, say, e to the ln x, that's equal to x. So we're going to use this in the proof because the e and the ln, they cancel their inverse functions. So here, we're going to take a to the x, and we're going to write it like this, e to the ln of a to the x. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use the power rule for logs. We're going to put the x in the front. By the way, hopefully this step is clear. I'm going to put this in parentheses so you see it. See, here's your x, here's your x, here's your x, here's your x. It might be uh, more clear if I write it like this. So you see how it matches. x, 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 x. It's the same thing. These cancel and you just get a to the x. Now we're going to put this x in the front using the power rule for logs. All right, now let's differentiate. So d dx of a to the x. Well, that'll be d dx of this. d dx of e to the x ln a. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So here it's going to be e to that. So e to the x times ln a times the derivative of the inside. We're using the chain rule. So when we take this derivative here, keep in mind that a is a constant. So when we take the derivative of x times ln a, well, the derivative of x is 1. So we're just left with ln a. Right? Again, this is a constant. It's like if we had 2x and we took the derivative, we would just get 2 because the derivative of x is 1. Same thing here. The derivative of x is 1. We're left with ln a, which is a number. It's a constant. Then what we do is we bring this back upstairs. So e to the ln, a to the x, ln a, right? using the properties of logarithms. And then we know these cancel, so we get a to the x, ln a, and that completes our little proof sketch. So 
pretty, pretty nice. It's a pretty nice proof. It's pretty easy once you understand it. Um, that's the, it's the case with all of math. If you understand it, it's easy. If you don't, it's impossible. Um, worth knowing how to do it. So basically you rewrite it using this. You bring the x down, then take the derivative and it should work out and you should get this formula. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care. In this video, I want to show you a derivative formula for logs with bases other than e. So let's say we're taking the derivative with respect to x and we have, say, log base a of x. So the formula for this is pretty simple. It's 1 over x times 1 over the natural log of a. So this is the, the formula for the derivative of a log where the base is something different, like it's not e or it's not 10. Um, if it's e, it still works. Ln e is 1, so everything still works whenever a is equal to e. Let's do some examples right away. Let's say we have the derivative of log base 2 of x. So you see how this works. So this would just be 1 over x times, and then 1 over ln 2. That's it. That's how, that's how you do it. Um, let's talk about what I said at the beginning of the video, uh, log base e of x. So log base e of x is the same thing as the natural log of x, right? ln x is equal to log base e of x. So this is the derivative of ln x. So we should get 1 over x. Let's check. This will be 1 over x times 1 over ln e. And then ln e is equal to 1. So this is 1 over x times 1 over 1. So you just get 1 over x. Boom, it checks, right? Super powerful formula. Um, let's do one more. D dx of log base 5. I don't like 5s, but we'll do 5s. <laughs> so it's just 1 over x. 1 over ln 5. And that's how you do it. So pretty powerful formula. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care. In this video, we're going to do a very quick proof to show that the derivative of the log base a of x is equal to 1 over x times 1 over ln a. The proof is extremely enlightening because there are some people that don't like this formula. So what you can do instead of using this formula is you can reprove it every single time. It's like one extra step and it's really not that difficult. So let's, let's go through it. So proof. So the trick is to rewrite this. So if you have log base a of x, you can use something from math from the past. It's called the change of base formula. Let me refresh your memory. Maybe you remember doing problems like this before in the past. If you had like log base 2 of 3, you would write ln 3 over ln 2. It was natural log of the top over natural log of the bottom. Natural log of the top over natural log of the bottom. So same thing here. It's natural log of x over the natural log of a. It's called the change of base formula. So you can always do that. And then what you can do to make things look pretty is you can pull out the 1 over ln a like this and write this as times ln x. These are exactly the same thing, right? If I multiply the natural log of x times 1, it just goes upstairs. This is a constant. So now we differentiate d dx of log base a of x. So when we take this derivative, this constant hangs out. So we just get 1 over ln a. And then the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So we get 1 over x. Same exact thing. We can just rearrange the terms. Multiplication is commutative, so we can write it like this. And that completes the proof. So this is enlightening because now you can avoid this formula if you don't like it. For example, let's say you had to compute the derivative of, I don't know, log base 2 of x. What you could do if you had something like this, you say, okay, I don't like this. Uh, I don't like the 2, so I'm going to write it like this, ln x over ln 2. Say, all right, now I'm going to pull it out. 1 over ln 2, ln x. Say, okay, now I'm going to take the derivative. So f prime of x. And then this is a constant, so it hangs out, 1 over ln 2 times, and then the derivative of this one is just 1 over x. So we completely circumvented the formula. So you don't even need the formula if you do it this way. Now, you might be wondering, do I do it this way? Absolutely not. 
I just memorize the formula. It saves me a step or two, but whatever works, right? Whatever works for you. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care. In this problem, we're going to find the area bounded by the graphs uh, that are given on the board. So let's go ahead and draw a picture of this region and let's find the area. So here is the y-axis and here is the x-axis. So um, y equals zero is a horizontal line. So that's this line here. And then x equals zero is a vertical line. So that's this line here. Uh, x equals 4 is a vertical line, so it's over here. Let's just say it's here. And then what's left is y equals 3 to the x. That's an exponential function that looks something like this. So now you can see where the graphs intersect. It would be something like this. This would be your region right here. So the goal is to find the area of this region. So recall whenever you have a function that's non-negative, it's, so it's above the x-axis, the integral of this function from, in this case, from zero to four is going to give you the area under this curve. So the area here is going to be the definite integral from zero to four of three to the x dx. That's gonna give us the area. So all you do is integrate this function from zero to four. Okay, so now all we have to do is integrate this. So recall when you integrate three to the x, you just get three to the x, and then you divide by the natural log of three. And so now all we have to do is draw a little line, and we put our zero here, and we put our four here. Always plug in the four first, so you get three to the fourth, to the fourth ln three, minus three to the zero ln three. 3 to the 4th is 81 because it's 3 squared times 3 squared, so it's 9 times 9. This is 81 natural log of 3 minus, and then 3 to the 0 is 1, so this is 1 over natural log of 3. 81 minus 1 is 80, so we end up with 80 over the natural log of 3. And that would be the area under this graph. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care. In this problem, we're going to find the derivative of this function. Let's go ahead and work through its solution. So recall the formula for the derivative with respect to x of, say, a to the x. This is equal to a to the x times the natural log of a. So for example, if it was, say, 6 to the x, Say we just had 6 to the x, it would be 6 to the x, natural log of 6. However, in this example, it's 6 to the 3x minus 4. So what we have to do is we have to use the chain rule. So let's go ahead and do that. The chain rule says we take the derivative of the outside function, which in this case, you could think of it as 6 to the x, and you leave the inside untouched, and you multiply by the derivative of the inside. This would be... 6 to the 3x minus 4. Okay, that's the derivative of the outside, and then ln 6. So all of this is the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside. Okay, I want to emphasize that the ln 6 comes with the derivative of the outside because it's, it's part of the formula. So derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside times the derivative of the inside. And then the inside function is this. So its derivative is simply 3, because the derivative of 3x is 3, and the derivative of negative 4 is 0. So you could leave it like this. Let's clean it up and write it a little bit nicer. This will be 3 ln 6, and I'm going to put this in parentheses, times 6 to the 3x minus 4. And that would be the derivative in this problem. It's a little bit sneaky because... Um, you know, the ln6 is kind of attached to that outer derivative. In this problem, we're going to find the derivative of this function, g of alpha equals 5 to the negative alpha over 2 times the sine of 2 alpha solution. So we do need a few formulas to do this problem. So one formula will be the product rule because we have this function here times this function here. There's a quick refresher. 
if you have two functions, f and g, and you want the derivative of the product, you could think of f as your first function and g as your second function. So it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Think of f as your first, g is your second. Also, this five to the negative alpha over two, um, there is a formula for the derivative, say with respect to x, of a to the x. This is equal to a to the x ln a. So equipped with these two formulas um, and some other basic facts from calculus, we should be able to compute this derivative. So let's go ahead and do it down here. So g prime of alpha. So this is our first function. That's gonna be our f in the formula. And this is our second function. So we have to find the derivative of the first. Now this is going to require a chain rule. So we take the derivative of the outside, evaluate it at the inside, then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. Let's do that. So the derivative of the outside is gonna be using this formula here. So it's five, the negative alpha over two, ln five. So this is the derivative of the outside, evaluated at the inside, times the derivative of the inside. So the inside function is this one. So that's just, negative alpha over two, which is really negative one half alpha. So when you differentiate this, you're basically differentiating alpha and the derivative of alpha is one. So this is gonna be negative one half. So all of this that I'm putting in brackets here is the derivative of the first. Again, it's the derivative of the outside, evaluated at the inside times the derivative of the inside, times the second, so sine of two alpha, Okay, plus the first function, which is five to the negative alpha over two, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of sine is cosine, but here we have a chain rule, so it's cosine of two alpha, that's the derivative of the outside, times the derivative of the inside, which is two. So that would be the derivative. Let me just go over it one more time. So we're using the product rule, it's the derivative of the first. So this derivative is going to be a chain rule. It's five to the negative alpha over two, ln five, that's the derivative of the outside using this formula here, times the derivative of the inside, which is negative alpha over two. You can think of this as negative one half times alpha, the derivative of alpha is one, boom, so we get negative one half. So this whole thing in brackets is the derivative of the first, times the second, plus the first function times the derivative of the second, Derivative of sine is cosine, but again, we have an inside piece here, so we have to apply the chain rule. It's cosine of two alpha times the derivative of the inside, which is two. So there's a lot of thought going on in this problem, even though it's like a one line solution. I'm just gonna rewrite it carefully. So g prime of alpha, it's kind of fun that it's alpha. I'm gonna put these constants in the front here, negative one half ln five. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put this in parentheses like this. There's no confusion with the fives here. And then five, the negative alpha over two times the sine of two alpha. And then I'm gonna put this two in the front here. So plus two times five to the negative alpha over two cosine of two alpha. It's a great, this is a great problem um, to test your calculus skills. Like, you know, do you know the product rule? Do you understand the formulas? Do you know the chain rule? Um, it's good stuff. In this video, we're going to find the derivative of this function. So before we do it, we're probably going to rewrite this using some properties of logs because if we just try to take the derivative right away, um, we're gonna end up having to take the derivative of this inside piece using the chain rule, and that's no good. So let's go ahead and start by rewriting this first using the properties of logs. So I'll start over here. So h of x. So first we're gonna use the quotient rule property of logs. Whenever you have a fraction, it turns into subtraction. So this whole thing will be log of the top piece. So log base three of x square root x minus six, and then minus log base three of three, right? It's just log of the top 
minus log of the bottom. That's one of the properties of logs. It's if you have the natural log of A over B, that's equal to the natural log of A minus the natural log of B. Very, very useful property of logarithms. And we can expand this even more. Uh, this right here is multiplication. So multiplication turns into addition. So h of x is equal to log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of this piece here. Um, in the next step, we're going to do some more simplification. So I'm going to go ahead and write the square root of x minus 6 as x minus 6 to the 1 half power like this. x minus 6 to the 1 half. And then we have minus log base 3 of 3. Okay, we're almost to the point where we can take the derivative. Let's go ahead and put this 1 half in the front. Again, that's another property of logs. So h of x is equal to log base 3 of x plus, and then just put the 1 half in the front. So 1 half log base 3 of x minus 6 minus log base 3 of 3. So remember, whenever you have an exponent here, you can put it in the front. That's called the power rule. And here we use the, what's called the product rule, right? So if I'll write it here so you see it. If you have the natural log of A times B, that's the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. That's what we use to go from here to here. The times became A plus. And then from here to here, the 1 half went into the front. Okay, now we can take the derivative. You might have noticed a long time ago, or maybe you didn't, that this piece here is just equal to 1. Log base 3 of 3 is, is just 1. But if you don't notice, it's okay. Because when we take the derivative, it's going to go away because it's a number. So h prime of x. So the formula for log base 3 of x is 1 over x, 1 over ln 3. Right, That's the formula. Recall, if you take the derivative with respect to x of log base a of x, this is equal to 1 over x, 1 over ln a. So in this example here, a is 3, so it's simply 1 over x, 1 over ln 3. Here, this 1 half hangs out, so plus 1 half times, and then it's 1 over x minus 6, 1 over ln 3, times the derivative of the inside. So notice the order in which everything was explained. So when you take this derivative, it's just 1 over this, 1 over that. Then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is 1. It wouldn't have mattered in this case if you put the 1 here or here, but I just want to emphasize that's how the process works. So the derivative of the outside is 1 over x minus 6, 1 over ln 3, times the derivative of the inside, which is 1. And this derivative here is 0, so minus 0. So the final answer would be 1 over x, 1 over ln 3, plus, I'm going to pull these constants out front, I'm going to write it like this, 1 over 2 ln 3 times 1 over x minus 6. And that would be an acceptable form of the answer. Typically you put constants in the front, that's just a typical thing that uh, people do. I didn't do it here, but you know, the reason I didn't do it here is because it could have caused confusion. If I do this, that's not clear, right? Is, is the 3 connected to the x? Or, or is the ln 3 connected to the x? What, what's going on there? So not good practice. It's good to try to write things in a way that's as clear as possible. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care. In this video, we're going to find the derivative of this function. So before we do, let's go ahead and try to rewrite this as much as we can. So notice we have a square root function here. Whenever you have a square root function, you can write it uh, with the exponent of 1 half. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that, and then we're going to put it in the front, just to make things a little bit easier. So we have f of t. And whenever you have logs in a problem, you should always think, can I rewrite what's inside the log in a convenient way? If the answer is yes, then you typically should try to do that. So this is t to the 3 halves, and then we'll write it as log base 6 of t plus 2, and this is to the 1 half power, so we're here. So in the next step, we'll just take the 1 half and put it in the front. That's a property of logs. So we have f of t equals, so let's put the 1 half in the front, so we have 1 half t to the 3 halves log base 6 of t plus 2. So we're here now. And so now we're going to use the product rule to find this derivative. So I'm going to insert parentheses here just to add clarity for myself. So now we know 
what the first piece is and what the second piece is. Recall the product rule says, I'll write it over here, if you have the derivative of f times g, think of this as the first piece and this as the second piece. So it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Now, notice I say first and second. The reason I do that is because here, this is called f. Here, we also have f, so it's very confusing if you think about it like this. Like, as what, if you think about it as f prime g, f g prime, that makes it harder. But if you think about it as the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, it doesn't matter what variables you use in the problem. You, your mind uh, can work a little bit more clearly. So let's do it. So f prime of t. So we're going to take the derivative of the first piece. So here we're going to multiply 3 halves times 1 half. So that's 3 fourths. So 3 fourths t, right, because you bring it down. So 3 fourths, 3 halves minus 1. So 3 halves minus 1 is really 3 halves minus 2 halves. So that's 1 half. So this is the derivative of the first. Right, we subtracted 1. 3 halves minus 2 halves is 1 half times the second. Going really slow. I haven't done this problem in a long time, so derivative of the first, and it looks really messy, times the second, plus the first, so just the one half t to the three halves, I'll put this in parentheses, times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of this, let me refresh your memory, if you have the derivative of log base a of x, it's one over x, one over ln a, that's the formula. So here it'll be it will be 1 over t plus 2, it's 1 over whatever is here, and then 1 over ln 6, times, now you multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of t plus 2 is 1. Beautiful. We're pretty much done and just have to erase the 1 and we call it a day. But let's go over it again. So it's the derivative of the first. So you brought down the 3 halves, so we have 3 fourths, subtracted 1, so we got here, times the second, plus the first times this derivative here. So it's 1 over t plus 2, uh, 1 over ln 6 times the derivative of the inside. Um, I'll go ahead and rewrite it one more time. I, I was just going to put the 1 over ln 6 here, but actually, you know what? Let's not even do that. Let's just call it a day on this one. So uh, easy is better. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care. In this problem, we're going to find the integral of 8 to the negative x with respect to x. So solution. So there is a formula that we're going to use. Recall if you have uh, the indefinite integral of a to the x with respect to x, this is equal to a to the x divided by the natural log of a plus our arbitrary constant of integration. So in this example, um, it's pretty simple, but it's not quite here yet. So there's a couple ways to do this. Method one is to rewrite this um, and just apply the formula. Method two is to use a substitution. Um, I'm going to rewrite it because I think that might be a, a solution that a lot of people don't realize. So let's do it that way. So we're going to do it without a u substitution. You could do it with the u sub by letting u be equal to negative x and proceeding from there. So we have the indefinite integral of 8 to the negative x with respect to x. And so the first step here is going to be to bring this downstairs to make this exponent positive. So we can write this as, well, it's really over 1. <laughs> so you could write this as 1 over 8 to the x dx, just like that. And then realize that 1 to the x is 1. So I can put an x here. And then we can write this as 1 over 8 to the x dx. Pretty cool, right? It's a nice little clever trick to save ourselves the substitution. And so then this is equal to applying the formula with a equals 1 over 8. It would be 1 over 8 to the x. And then on the bottom we have the natural log of 1 over 8. And then we have our constant of integration, capital C. Really nice, clean solution, and we avoided uh, all substitutions. In this example, we're going to evaluate this indefinite integral 
we have x times 5 to the negative x squared. Let's go ahead and try to work through it. Solution. So this is a product, and because there's an x squared here, if you think about x squared, its derivative is 2x. So there's an x here. So u substitution seems like a good first attempt. We'll start by letting u be equal to negative x squared. And then we'll compute du. So du is equal to. So here we use the power rule. We bring down the 2. And we subtract 1 from the exponent. So you get the first power here. So I won't write it. And then your dx. And as always with u substitution, we would like to um, clean this up. So we want this to look like what's up here. So up here we just have an x and a dx. Here we have a negative 2x dx. So we'll get rid of the negative 2 by dividing both sides by negative 2. That leads us, leaves us. <laughs> so it's du over negative 2. So this will be negative 1 half du. And that's equal to x dx. Really nice. Really quite nice. All right. So now we're ready to go. We're ready to make the substitution. So let's do it. So this is going to be the indefinite integral. So we have 5 to the u, right? Because this piece here is u. So this is u. That's 5 to the u. Okay. And then what's left now? Just the x and the dx. That's negative 1 half du. So I'll put the negative 1 half out here and the du here. To integrate this, we're just going to use uh, a familiar formula. If it's not familiar, <laughs> let me make it familiar for you. If you have the indefinite integral of a to the x with respect to x, this is given by a to the x over the natural log of a, plus our constant of integration, capital C. So in this case, our a is 5. So this is negative 1 half. 5 to the u over the natural log of 5, plus our constant of integration, capital C. And we're almost done, not quite. We have to remember that our original variable of integration was x. So we're going to go back to x now. So this is going to be negative 1 half, 5. And uh, u was negative x squared. So this will be negative x squared over the natural log of 5 plus c, which is our constant of integration. So yeah, nice, nice example, I think.